Hello everyone, I'm Paulina. And I'm Mike. And we're Off Grid Hawaii. And in this video, we're gonna talk about different weeds that we have here on the property. And we're gonna focus on the ways that we incorporate these weeds into the farm and into our everyday life. And we're gonna try to stay away from focusing only on the negative. Before we get into that, uh, we wanted to talk about CBD. So why are we talking about CBD right now? Well, um, a company called Veritas Farms reached out to us um, wanting to sponsor our next video upload. So CBD is a product that we've been using for about a year now um, from different companies, but most recently we just started using Veritas Farms and we really like it, so we definitely want to promote them in, on this channel. Um, yeah, one cool thing about Veritas, they do everything in-house. So they grow the plants, they extract the oils, they do the packaging, and it's similar to like our values, what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. We, we want to grow our own food and, and you know like eat all the best food. Yeah, and also their company makes a full spectrum hemp oil. So it's not just CBD, which is one of the cannabinoids. It contains a bunch of other ones. So I, I like the company itself, um, what they stand for. But I also like their packaging. That's one thing I did notice. Like the droppers are really good quality mm -hmm. and they are measured. And it's really easy to yeah. like suck it out. A lot of them, other ones, like you press it and not enough comes up and it's mm -hmm. a pain. But yeah. So really good packaging. So anyway, we don't want to make this video specifically about CBD because there's a lot to talk about that. Um, but definitely if you're in the market for CBD products, check out the link below in the description, which has a promo code that you can use towards their products um, and just a link to their store so you can browse all the different things that they offer. Yeah, there's also a pretty cool video we found. Um, like I think it's on their channel, so we're going to link that too. It kind of shows the whole process and like tells you a little bit more about them. So check that out too if you're interested. Mm -hmm. But just to give you guys a little idea of why we use CBD. So personally, I like to use it to make me feel more calm and relaxed in times where I'm feeling stressed out. So this helped me out when I was guiding zipline tours because that job is kind of stressful. You have to be um, focusing on like other people and like their lives is, are in your hands so I would always take CBD um, to kind of like ease off the jitters from taking coffee which would make me feel like really um, kind of give me more energy and stuff feel more uplifted so the CBD would kind of work really well in order to make me feel energized yet really calm and focused um, so that's why I liked it and then just in general to just give me that like feeling of relaxation yeah so I kind of do it the same way too, but like um, I just feel an overall like well-being throughout the day from it. If you haven't yet and you're interested, maybe check them out. So what is a weed? According to George Washington Carver, a weed is a flower growing in the wrong place. So what does this mean? It means that anything can be a weed. Even a fruit tree, if it's growing five feet from your house, it's considered a weed because eventually it's going to just grow into your house and you're not going to want it there. So, that being said, nothing's a weed. If something is growing way out in nature, it's not bothering you, then who cares? It's not a weed. There are no weeds in nature, right? Everything is just growing. There are a few plants that are just considered weeds because nobody wants them anywhere near them their garden or their house or anything and those are the ones we're going to cover today um, we're going to do this countdown style so we have seven we're going to start from seven will be the worst one the one we hate the most i guess and then the first one will be the one that's the weed that is pretty useful so here to start off the countdown is paulina all right, so starting off with number seven, we have Coster's Curse, also known as Soap Bush. Um, it's right here behind me. I also have a little one in my hand that I just picked out of the ground. So this is the worst on our list because it is so highly invasive um, and it grows really easily. So this is what it looks like. I just picked this off the ground. Um, this is very small and it was still kind of hard to pick. Um, the roots tend to get pretty thick and dense and they really root down to the ground so it's kind of hard to pull when it's small because it propagates um really easily via the seeds in its berries so the berries have a lot of little seeds in them and when the birds and the pigs and animals and stuff spread these seeds around they will stay in the soil and grow like pretty fast and when they do grow they form these really thick 
dense patches of castor's cursed bushes um, and it kind of just prevents anything else from growing. So if you try to weed whack these, the stems are very thick so it's kind of difficult for the weed whack strings to cut through it. So you have to use a bush blade to get rid of it um, and then when you do chop it down it grows back even thicker so it's super annoying but we're gonna look at the bright side so some positive things about it is that because it grows so readily and fast is that it can be used as chop and drop so you can just chop it down let it go back into the earth and form more soil with it um, also it contains berries that are actually edible so these little berries they're kind of resemble blueberries and even though they do have a lot of seeds in them um, it's still kind of sweet you can eat it you look online there's some recipes so you can make blueberry coster's curse muffins with them <laughs> it doesn't sound as nice coster's curse muffin <laughs> as a blueberry muffin but you can use it it's still edible just don't feed it to your goats because i read that it's poisonous to goats so next on our list number six is cecropia which has this pretty cool looking leaf the reason why it's a weed though is because it grows so quick and it's very weak and it can break limbs and drop on things, uh, you know, like your house or your car or your fruit trees. So you don't really want to let it to grow really tall. I seem to think that it sucks nutrients away from other trees. It has these like really long like rope roots that just go and I feel like they tap into the food source of the, the fruit trees. Like I put, you know, fertilizer and emulsion around the trees and I think it taps in. Um, we had bought two jackfruits and the one that was near all these cecropia trees did not grow nearly as much as the one that doesn't have any near it. Um, it grew, the other one grew twice as big as the one near the cecropias and a couple of the other trees did the same. We had a breadfruit that didn't grow much that was right near like a big area where it had a lot of cecropias. So I'm not sure about that but maybe. There's one term that I never really heard before coming here and that was like weed tree or junk tree. Um, coming from Connecticut we never really called trees junk or weeds but here there are quite a few and this is one of them. So what can we do that's good with this tree? Well we can cut it um, like kind of a stump like two to three feet tall and let it regrow and that's what uh, I have behind me. It just it's regrowing. It's grown like I don't know, eight or ten new branches and when I come by to feed the trees I also just cut these back and just keep cutting these limbs off and putting them on the ground to create biomass, use them as mulch. Um, a couple other good uses that I read about which I'm not sure how good it works but it says you could use the leaves for sandpaper. They're like, they feel just like sandpaper so maybe we'll give that a try sometime. It does on some varieties have an edible fruit. None of the ones on our property seem to taste good, but I have had ones, they are kind of like gummy worms and fig. They look like gummy worms, but they taste a little bit like fig when they're uh, dry and sweet. The ones here have been really gross, so I'm not sure if there's different varieties that taste better. Also, I heard from my neighbor that the leaves are very high in protein and good for animals. So she feeds them to her rabbits and goats and stuff. All right, so this right here is number five, the Mimosa pudica, it's, it's called. Um, but more commonly, we call it sleepy grass or sensitive plant. Um, and this one grows quite abundantly all throughout the property. Um, it was specifically very, very dense when we first got here and the soil wasn't as good. So this plant is a good indication of kind of like what quality the soil is at in order to plant fruit trees and stuff. So we've noticed that the more that we build up the soil, the less of this plant um, that shows up. So where it mostly will show up is in places where we haven't really put anything into the soil or and built up any more soil. So it kind of grows along the driveways and stuff like that. Um, which is the main reason why we didn't really like it at first is because it's very spiky. If you step on it, you could get those splinters in your skin. It's kind of like thorns. Some positive aspects of it is that it's used medicinally um, in Ayurveda especially. If you want to find out more about it, 
definitely look it up, Mimosa Pudica, and it'll tell you like all these different uses for it medicinally. Um, and on the farm, it's great because it actually is a nitrogen fixer. Um, once it's chopped down, it can put nitrogen back into the soil. So it's not that bad, you know, to have around. And the best part about it is that it's a cool little party trick to show your friends if they've never seen the plant before, because when you touch it, the leaves close up. Okay, so number four is glory bush. And it's also called Puna Rose here, but I'm guessing it's probably not called Puna Rose anywhere else. This one is interesting because in some places it's probably not considered a weed at all and you could probably buy it at nurseries. But here, because of the way it grows and so fast and it can take over the understory of native forest pretty quickly, we do consider it a weed here. Um, this one uh, fell over. They aren't very strong so they do fall over a lot. And I have an abu tree right here which it kind of just grazed. It didn't damage it too much. But what I did was I took all the branches and brush and leaves and I made a pile here and I made a pile here and that brings me to the first good thing that this is for and that's to make mulch, um, make brush piles, compost, whatever, use the leaves and especially the wood. This is a very woody um, mulch crop so there's a lot of wood material that is good for like um, for the fungus and stuff to grow um, so I do like it it's pretty easy to chop with a machete too you kind of just chop a big branch and you can like shave it and make you know a nice pile and then after a while like you let it sit for a month you can come along and step on it and it compresses more so it's a pretty nice one to work with it's not too hard to get rid of if you really wanted to I use a pickaxe to pull the stumps out and the roots come out pretty easily it breaks down pretty quick so it's a good mulch crop. Um, the other thing I really like about it is it has flowers year round. So that'll attract bees and other pollinating insects, even butterflies and stuff. And they look pretty, you know, flowers. It's nice to have trees with flowers on them. They look pretty. Paulina loves uh, flowers. <laughs> um, yeah, so very quick. This is a good mulch crop and also good for pollinators. Number three is Hono Hono grass. It is like a crawling grass, I guess. And you guys that live here and garden here probably know this as the weed that grows into your garden bed first after you've done weeding and it just creeps right back in. Um, so it can be annoying around garden beds, but if it's in the orchard and it's growing, it doesn't affect trees much. It's really nice to have actually because it grows so fast and when you weed whack it, it's food for your trees. So I like it for that. Another good reason I like it is um, the chickens like it. It's edible for humans and chickens. And um, there's a lot of it growing around the chicken coop. So whenever I feel like they need to balance their diet out with a little bit of greens, I'll either let them out and they come and eat it or I'll just throw it in their cage. Um, we have a lot around the container too, so it's sort of like we're killing two birds with one stone when I pick this and I feed the chickens. Yeah, so like I said, it's edible for humans. Let's let's try it. I don't really remember what it tastes like. It's not really that good, so I don't think you'd really want to eat it. <laughs> Maybe if you cook it, it might taste good, like a leafy green or something, but... It's basically chicken food or rabbit food or whatever. They like it a lot more than humans, I think. So number two is probably, no, it is the most hated tree on the island. You guessed it, Albizia. This tree is responsible for lots of damage. It can fall on houses, power lines, cars, people, and it's very dangerous when it gets really tall. You do not want this tree to get to a point where it's dangerous, you know, and it's going to be costly to get rid of. That being said, it is one of my favorite um, weeds, actually probably my favorite, and the one that is most useful here. I do not plant this tree, 
So it just comes up. Um, we have a couple in the area, the neighborhood. So the seeds blow very easily from neighbors or you know anywhere, and they'll just drop on the ground. And if it's in a convenient place, I'll let it grow. I, um, some places I've let it grow 20 feet, 30 feet tall. As long as I know that I can get it down without damaging anything else in the yard, uh, I'm fine with letting it grow tall. And that's because it's a nitrogen fixing tree. So as it's growing, it's uh, creating more nitrogen inside the soil and um, extra nitrogen is released into the you know the ground in the surrounding areas especially when you cut it so what I do I'll let them grow about 20 feet tall and I'll stump them just like I do with the Cecropia like I was saying about two or three feet tall and let it regrow and that's what I have here this one was cut you know maybe the tree was like this big and it was cut and now just like kind of branches come off it and they come off really easily. You just like, you can pull them off once you get to that point. And it just creates a really nice mulch. Um, the wood breaks down really fast. It's uh, kind of like a balsa wood. It's very light. And the leaves are that like, just, I mean, really, looks like they're really rich in nitrogen and the wood would be rich in uh, carbon. So it's a good combination. We did make a whole separate video about Albizia a long time ago. Not the best quality, but there is a lot of good information in there. So we'll put that video in the description, a link. So if you want to check that out, go ahead. But that's really all there is about Albizia. Okay guys, so the moment you've all been waiting for, the number one weed on our list, and I feel really bad even including this on the list because it is a native plant, it is the Uluhe Fern. And the reason I even put it on the list is because it's a common misconception that it is a weed here. Uh, maybe just because it's kind of hard to clear and it has like a wooden like uh, stem. And if you weed whack it, they could get stuck in you and it's kind of annoying if you're trying to clear a spot. But it plays a very important role in the native forests here. And that role is like sort of like a higher understory. They grow about six, eight feet tall. I've seen them even more like when they kind of climb up trees. But what they do is they block out all the other invasives that would grow there. And right behind me is kind of a good example of what a native forest would look like. It has ohia, with the understory being the uluhe. The only thing we're missing here is the hapu'u fern, which um, will emerge out of the uh, uluhe. And um, those grow maybe like 15, 20 feet sometimes. So that's what a native forest should look like. But when you clear the uluhe, it opens up the uh, ground for all the invasives around here to come in. Now I really appreciate the Uluhe. As I was researching I read a quote from somebody that said you'll miss it when it's gone and that definitely can't be a truer statement you know. In some areas where you clear it and then a bunch of invasives come in and like really destroy the area it's, and you can't get rid of those after it's like really hard. The Uluhe is a very slow growing plant so I mean it, it doesn't stand a chance uh, up against some of these invasives that grow a lot quicker. So other things it does is like if you do live in an area where there's landslides and it just wipes out a whole area, the first plant to usually come in is the uluhe, you know, in a native setting. And what it's there to do is uh, help keep the soil together. It creates like a, a mat of like root system which holds the soil together and um, really helps with erosion. The other thing me and Paulina just recently learned while we were on a little tour up in Volcano is that parts of it can be used as a laxative. But with all that being said, um, I definitely wouldn't recommend clearing any of it unless you're 100% sure you're going to plant on it very soon. It's, it's really hard to get it to come back. Most likely something will replace it that's way worse than, than the uluhe. Alright guys, so that wraps up the video. Seven weeds that we find here on the property and some uses for them on the farm. Um, let us know in the comments below if you have any more input to add um, about these different plants that we mentioned. 
and also if there are any other weeds that you think we should have included in this video that deserve some recognition. Alright guys, so don't forget to check out the link below for Veritas Farm CBD products if you're interested. And um, see you next time. Bye. Bye. And remember your weeds aren't all that bad. No. <laughs> okay. No. Go just walk no, in again. Okay. Keep walking. <laughs>